Welcome to Herbally Yours, an adventure into the world of natural medicine. Here is your host, Dr. Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse who will help you take the leap to ultimate wellness. Greetings, and thank you for joining me, Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, for another edition of Herbally Yours, right here on the voice of Nassau Community College in Garden City, New York, 90.3 WHPC. Herbally Yours brings you the latest information about the many facets in the world of natural living. And today, I'm so happy to have on board as my guest, Mr. Larry Poirier, and he is the owner of ESSIAC, that's E-S-S-I-A-C, ESSIAC, Canada International. And we're going to tell you all about ESSIAC. Larry is a graduate of Integrative Herbal Medicine and Supportive Cancer Care from the Technion Israel Institute of Technology, and he has an MBA from Queen's University, and he is involved, and he's been involved with multimodal therapy clinics, which employ a lot of natural and functional medicine therapeutics, and as now he is working with ESSIAC and really bringing the consciousness about ESSIAC uh, back into the world. And you can find out more at ESSIAC, E-S-S-I-A-C dot C-A. So thank you so much for joining us today, Larry. Well, thank you so much for having me, Ellen. It's a pleasure. Now, as many of our listeners know, and perhaps you know, I've been doing natural medicine since 1964. Yes, that's a six. And way back then, you know, Essiac was was really a main go-to herbal tea for people not only dealing with, let's say, a devastating illness like cancer, but just to stay, you know, as a cleansing and really staying healthy. Very true. It has been around since 1922 when Rene Case first brought the, uh, the, 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 the recipe forward. Uh, working with people who were afflicted with cancer in her uh, practice. So I want to spell that for people again. That's Essiac, E-S-S-I-A-C, and then .ca, which is a wonderful website where, Larry, I love how you put up there the whole history of, of Nurse Casey. And by the way, Essiac is really her last name spelled backwards. It took me a long, a lot of years to figure that out. There's, there, there's so much to talk about Renee Casey's story. Um, you know, she was a rebel nurse back, you know, way back in the 1920s, 1930s. She led her own practice. Uh, she treated thousands of patients. And, it, and, it's, and it's an amazing success story here in Canada. It was. And how did she, or perhaps I think you even talk about that on your site, um, you know, what was the history of how she developed this very special herbal formula? Well, as she was a nurse practicing, uh, she learned uh, from a lady who had been affected by breast cancer, and this lady had been healed. She had a lot of scarring because it was a very severe case of breast cancer, and Renee was very surprised, saying, how did this get healed? Uh, normally, this is terminal when it gets to this phase. And the lady told her of a medicine man, so that would be an indigenous person or, or aboriginal, depending on uh, what you're native, it's another way of putting it, um, who had prepared a tea for her. And she'd been taking the tea, and she found that you know she no longer had cancer afterwards, and she survived many years. And she told Renee Case, Nurse Case, of the recipe. And Renee Case started preparing a, a recipe based on what was verbally told to her from this uh, patient. Did she have a clinic or was she, you know, working in a place where nuns work? I've worked with a lot of nuns who do health care. Some, in fact, of course, you know, on nurses as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, she, she was working in a, in, a, in, a, in a clinic, actually. And then what happened is as her reputation grew, uh, her own mother was dying of, of cancer. And uh, the doctors threw up their hands and said it was terminal. And she did uh, use this formula on her mother. And her mother was cured and went on to live uh, many more years. Uh, so 
eventually people sought her out for treatment and the town of Bracebridge gave her a former hotel, rented it to her for a dollar a year. And she got to use this hotel as a clinic in Bracebridge, Ontario, Canada. And the government said that people could go visit her for cancer treatment uh, only with a signed doctor's note giving them permission to treat her or giving nurse case permission to treat her. And that's how she uh, built her practice. That's pretty amazing because I would say in the case of other natural therapies, usually the government response, certainly here in the United States, I don't know about Canada, is quite the opposite. Like if we talk about somebody, perhaps you're familiar with Harry Hoxie. Are you familiar with the Hoxie remedy? I, I've read a little bit about it, but I'm not too familiar. So it's a similar story where he found that there was a therapeutic combination of herbs that was extremely helpful for people suffering from various illnesses, including cancer. And he actually did a demonstration for a group of doctors in a hospital, and he was very successful. They had invited him to show that he would fail, but instead, he was imminently successful. So after that, the AMA and the government organizations went after him aggressively and said he could not sell that therapeutic agent, which was also an herbal tea. So he decided to just give it away and they still arrested him. You know, so it's interesting that you were saying that Nurse Case actually got governmental support for those people who wanted to try that particular kind of natural therapy. Yes, that's correct. And that was at least in the early days. Later on, things got a little bit more complicated. And unfortunately, she was, you know, put, uh, obliged to shut down her clinic, but she continued giving away her recipe for free uh, right. right up until the end of her days. So that's kind of a similar story where they actually did not want people to have it. I'll say for one thing, and, and we're doing a show, we're mentioning cancer. I never really like to mention that word on radio because there really is so much government bias against certain words. Right now, cancer, another one is COVID. Um, you're actually not allowed to use these words. They've been taking down websites and podcasts and anything that discusses these things. So I just want a disclaimer saying we're not telling anyone to use this for those kinds of illnesses. That's why I love to also say you know, perhaps it's good for something specific, but also it's wonderful for cleansing um, to act sort of more preventatively so that you don't develop some of these more advanced issues. You're correct, Ellen. We should never say, you know, anybody should get care, you know, provided by their doctor. Uh, and part of what I, what I did when I went to the Technion is I learned about integrative cancer care, which is very popular in Europe where they administer both herbal supplements as well as traditional, conventional, conventional right. modern medicine. Yes, which really, you know what, that is probably the best way to go, especially with a severe illness, because you might need um, the big guns offered by conventional, and very often the more natural therapeutics can be sort of supportive against the negative adverse effects of the conventional therapies. And we find in many studies in China and other areas of the world where they really do, and in Europe, where they use these things together, they are able to document some really excellent results. But of course, in terms of ESIAC, um, anyone can choose to use it, you know, let's say for immune support. Wouldn't that be a good overall use versus waiting for a disease process? Well, we, we strongly think that there is evidence that it would help with uh, supporting the immune system. Uh, it, the, the herbal components in SEAC have a lot of antioxidant properties, fighting free radicals, protecting DNA from damage. So those basic attributes would definitely lead to help people lead a healthier lifestyle. Yeah, and that th that's a way that I think it's great to use it. Now, when I used SEAC, both for myself and clients for many years in the 60s and 70s, we actually used to get it very easily in almost any, you know, small ma and pa health food store, most of which don't exist anymore, right? 
Sadly. But we used to get it just as almost what you, not a raw tea, but a dry tea. And we would make it, you know, actually in water and then strain it into a cup. So that was the old fashioned way. That, that's true that in our, for our, our firm, who produ- still produces the original Essiac powder, which is ground herbal powder, uh, we found that many people now are pressed for time and prefer, you know, getting it in, a, in a, either an herbal tincture or getting it as an already extracted, you know, capsule. Uh, it, it seems like that is with people now, you know, being very busy, not really wanting to take time to make a pot of tea. Uh, we find that this is more useful for a lot of people. So let's describe and let me reintroduce you so people know what we're talking about on Herbal Yours today. And I want to thank you for listening to Herbal Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse at naturalnurse.com. And today my guest is Mr. Larry Poirier. And he is um, one of the people along with his wife who own Essiac, E-S-S-I-A-C dot C-A. And he got interested in natural therapeutics and is trying to bring Essiac back into availability. Would, would you say that's what your focus is? Because you're not reinventing it. Absolutely not. We're just letting people know that this, this remedy was very, very popular. As you all know, when, when Renee Casey was alive, it, it It kind of fell out of favor for a certain time. It was actually banned within Canada. Oh, Uh, wow. I did not know that. (laughs) Yeah. And now it's been reintroduced uh, as a uh, herbal supplement. So basically under the dietary supplement guidelines and rules, um, as opposed to any kind of medical claims or anything like that. So it did get reintroduced and we were able to still manufacture it here in Canada grow the herbs here, and we do ship some quantities to the USA too. Wait, that is very interesting what you just said. You actually also grow the herbs? You don't just procure them from somewhere? Well, the the herbs are sourced mostly here in Canada. Sometimes we have a hard job making enough supply, so we do source some from the United States. But a lot of it is either wildcrafted or, you know, we can get it certified organic only if somebody owns the land. That's the only way, as you know, Ellen, that it can be certified organic. Uh, if it's wildcrafted, it can't be certified as organic. Uh, and we also get some supply from um, some farmers in locally here in Canada. So that is wonderful. So it's locally sourced. Now, do you um, have your own manufacturing facility rather than just going with a private label provider? Oh, well, that's a great question. So it's manufactured here in Canada. Uh, by a uh, Canadian government approved facility. So they have a certain kind of tracking. They have to keep samples of every batch produced. They have to keep their methodology uh, written down uh, with certain kind of practices. That way we can make sure that everything we supply is repeatable and it's the same product every time. Yes, that's a big deal because here in the U.S., there's a name for that, and I think it's similar in Canada, which is called GMP, Good Manufacturing Practices. And here in the United States, one of the main jobs that I do in life is I do regulatory. So people who want to bring an herbal product to market or already have one, um, I actually work on making sure that they're doing everything compliant, even the claims they're making and the label and making sure the herbs are listed correctly, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot to it. And I've seen the Canadian rules. It's a similar whole big deal. Very similar. And anything, (laughs) typically anything approved for sale in Canada will get approval for being sold in the United States. We have very similar rules and restrictions on our herbal supplements. That's true. So we know it's being made in a really excellent way with locally sourced ingredients. They're not being, you know, sometimes they're shipped in, even if they're grown in Canada, they ship them to China for processing and then ship it back to the manufacturing facility. But you're saying no, it's, it's very locally sourced. Yes, absolutely. We would never ship our product to China. You're never sure what you're going to get back when it goes out there. 
Yeah, and boy, all that extra, you know, energy used for what? I don't know. But in any event, then how would you describe that the liquid tincture is prepared? So uh, the liquid tincture, what we do is we take the original tea powder, it's the exact same product. And then what we do is we macerate it. So we mix it in a mixture of 40% alcohol and 20% water, and that is macerated. Uh, so that means it's just allowed to soak in and then it goes into basically it's almost like a, a sieve where the uh, the product is is held in a tank and then it's uh, released after a certain period of time uh, and and given a very rough filtering. Uh, we don't want to filter it too finely because one of the big extracts out of burdock root is inulin and inulin is excellent for gut health. Also, we have slippery elm in our recipe and slippery elm. Also, you need the mucilage to come through. So our product is a little cloudy when it becomes a, a liquid extract. Then we then uh, reduce the alcohol content down to around 15% to act as a preservative uh, before it's bottled. So that's all that's in there. Like if you read the label, I don't have a label to look at. What would that say? Uh, what it would say, I've got one right Good, here. Good, I figured you would. <laughs> uh, 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 burdock, uh, sheep sorrel, slippery elm, Indian rhubarb, purified water, because it, it's, uh, it, it's water taken from a local river that's, uh, you know, make sure that it's filtered properly, uh, alcohol, and a little citric acid in there to add a little tartness to it, and preservative also. Right, citric acid acts duly as it's sort of something that's in vitamin C. And yeah. that it's a very good non-toxic preservative. Yeah. So, so that's all that's in there. Now, is the bottle like a one-ounce bottle or a two-ounce bottle? That's a great question. The bottle is uh, it's 300 milliliters because the products are made in Canada, which is oh, you're right, 10.14 fluid ounces. Okay. So that's a pretty big bottle, then. It's not a yeah, little it's tiny a big bottle, bottle, and you only take it by the teaspoon, so it should last quite a long time. And I should mention that we still sell the original herbal tea powder and the herbal tea powder just has the four ingredients in it. There is no preservatives. There's no additives because it's just ground root and leaf uh, and bark. Um, doesn't need any preservatives as long as it's kept in a dry position. And then when people uh, make the tea, what they're basically doing, Ellen, is they're making their own hot water extraction. So, so describe how someone would go about doing it. Because somebody like me who's more of a purist, you know, that's probably what I would do, just like we used to do. Well, the, 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 the bottle contains a, a one and a half ounces of the powder, which is, again, burdock root, slippery elm, uh, sheep sorrel, which is very important, and um, Indian rhubarb, uh, sometimes called turkey rhubarb. They use name interchangeably. And uh, then that is mixed with 80 ounces, 80 fluid ounces of water, where it is then boiled and you boil it for about 10 minutes, rolling boil, then you let it cool. And then the traditional way of doing it is then you heat it up again, you give it another just to a low simmer where you let it simmer for a little bit, and then you can refrigerate it and drink a few ounces at a time, whenever, you know, the, the, you know, the need arises, usually two ounces in the morning and two ounces at night is the most typical way that tra the traditionalists take it. Right. And, you know, it doesn't taste, I mean, it's not, let's say sweet, but it's not a terrible taste. I would call it an earthy flavor. It's, uh, it, it tastes like a mixture of like new mown hay uh, and, um, yeah, fresh. You know, it is very earthy. It does have a, a, a it, is, it is quite, people get used to it. Uh, I've come to, I've come to like it, but it's not something that everybody would necessarily gravitate to right away. Some people like to add a little honey to it and sweeten it a little bit, I think. Is, but the, the important thing is, is that you get the full uh, mixture. It doesn't dissolve completely when you boil it in water, but still, if you drink it, including some of the residual sediment, it does seem to, you know, help. Uh, keep the biome, the gut biome healthy, for sure. Yeah, so it's it's really um, a wonderful old-fashioned kind of remedy that has been around such a long time and really is something that I think it's great to work with, you know, like kind of as an overall tonic rather than something that's, 
uh, specifically to use for a particular kind of il illness. Yeah, you're right. Um, you know, what I said earlier, probably I, I shouldn't have put it in quite the terms I put it in. It, you know, it is, it is a lot of positive results in terms of, you know, making sure it detoxifies the body, helps cleanse the system. Well, one thing that you have done, which is very special, Eric, as we move forward in time, you know, you picked up something that was a traditional remedy that was well proven in its time by a nurse case, and then you're bringing it back. But also, your company is now sort of moving forward um, with sort of upgrading the formula by adding something else to it, which is called A AHCC. And you're calling that, you know, like a, an advanced kind of Essiac, Essiac Gold. Why would you do that? Well, we are very interested in traditional people who love to use Essiac and truly believe in it, as we do too, uh, know that it has a lot of positive health benefits, or it seems to, or it does provide uh, people with, um, how should I say, uh, you know, immune system protection when they're going through difficult uh, health challenges. And what we looked for was other ingredients that would have been medically proven through human clinical trials to also have similar benefits. And we settled on a product called AHCC, which is a fermented mushroom extract uh, that has gone through 30 human clinical trials, uh, double blind studies, uh, placebo controlled, um, and it does seem to have benefits. It's very, very popular uh, in a lot of health food stores that we visited. Uh, it's in steady demand, uh, sold out quite often. And we contacted the company and originally they said no. Uh, but then the CEO heard that we were from ESIAC and he says, you have such a healing tradition. We'd love to work with you guys. And uh, they're not really working with many people, but they were happy to work with us. And uh, we basically developed SEAC Gold through a partnership with them. So uh, that's where we have the original SEAC formula and then an uh, added ingredient, a new added ingredient. That's exactly the case. Yes, we've added the, a therapeutic dose of the AHCC mushroom extract. And what about, I know you've also worked, we have, you know, a few minutes left to bring this information to people, that you also have supported some actual um, scientific studies that have been going on, looking at SEAC's ability to support health. Yes, we have done, uh, we've done some, there's been a lot of clinical trials, clinical cases written up about us. Um, they are uh, there's, 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 there's a fair amount of positive ones. There's one that was only done about 18 uh, tw in 2018. And that one was actually done. Uh, it was an animal based study uh, where they tested it uh, for rats with leukemia. And they found that the rats did not lose as much weight while, and also tended to have an increased survival. So that was a 2018 study done on the SEAC recipe. And that's fairly, that's amazing. And so, so were you guys behind that? Because like you said, it wasn't as popular by the time we got around to 2018. Uh, no, that was done privately. We weren't behind that one directly. We have been behind two. Uh, one done in Ireland, uh, where it tested the SEAC traditional T uh, for uh, free radicals and uh, reducing and protecting DNA. So that study did come out quite well as well as we were behind one at the University of Purdue, where it tested it in vitro uh, against uh, prostate cancer and breast, breast cancer cells. So how do you get these studies going? I mean, that's not an easy thing to do. You have to find an organization. Is it a clinical trial? Is it a cell study? Uh, we've had some done on both. So it often is something that we contact a university, see if they're interested in doing the research. And then we offer to either sponsor the research through uh, defraying some of their costs, as well as giving them the raw material that they're going to use the experiment on. So then you, then you actually send the actual SEAC formula. That's correct. And they'll we actually do send, that. Yes, we send the raw material there. So that's, you know, really an interesting thing that you've taken this historical remedy and uh, sort of modernized it without changing it, except now you did 
take it the next step with adding in AHCC besides the herbs like burdock and sheep sorrel and slippery elm and turkey rhubarb. Can you tell us more about why you think um, Nurse Casey's use something like burdock root, which is actually something I identified right at Restoration Farm, Farm on our herb walk just the other day. It's still very popular. It's used as a vegetable called gobo in Asian cooking. What else can you tell us about some of these herbs? Um, well, burdock root, um, it's debatable whether burdock root came, was already native to North America or whether it was later on imported to North America. Uh, there is a long history of native use of burdock root, um, but were they using it before, um, let's say, the white man came here? They're not really sure. It's traditionally used in many different practices, including in China, where, as you mentioned, it's called gobo. Um, and in China, it's used for a combination of uh, infections, sore throats, boils, rashes, skin problems. Uh, in Canada, traditionally, it's been used for coughs, asthma, skin and blood diseases, and it's been used uh, since in, by Native Americans um, for preparations for women in labor, for example. So that was burdock root. Yeah, it, it's really um, interesting because it's a common vegetable in Asian cooking, too. And then yet it has all these medicinal. I like it. It's got a flavor, I would say, more like something like water chestnuts, you know, not not too intense in any way. It, it's actually interesting. The Russians actually uh, roast the roots and they use it as a substitute for coffee. Oh, I've never heard it used that way. I've heard chicory is used mm -hmm. that way quite a bit, but I never heard that burdock root is. It doesn't taste like coffee at all, but it doesn't have that much of a flavor. As a vegetable, it's great. It's almost more like water chestnut, like kind of bland. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. Well, thank you so much. Um, we're going to be ending shortly, but I'd love you to just share more about how people can find out more and um, contact you or Essiac. Um, well, we're always available. We have our website, which is seac, -E -S -S -I -A -C -C -A, where they can read a little bit about Renee Case's history. Uh, they can also contact us through that. And we're happy to share any research should anybody want anything. Uh, we, we have quite a database, about 70 clinical research studies, uh, in vitro studies. We have uh, medical reports that we're happy to share. Uh, again, knowing that this is not necessarily a curative for anything, but it does have some tested benefits for people. Well, that was a wonderful wrap up and thank you so much for sharing with us today. Thank you so much, Ellen. And thank you listeners for tuning into Herbally Yours, produced in the studios of 90.3 WHPC, Nassau Community College, Garden City, New York. For further information, you can email us at whpc at ncc.edu. This is your host, Ellen Kamai at naturalnurse.com, inviting you to join us again next week for another edition of Herbally Yours. Until then, stay healthy.